Have you ever walked down the health supplement aisle and felt overwhelmed by the labels? Probiotics, prebiotics, symbiotics, it all starts to sound like a biology exam. But understanding these terms, especially the difference between probiotics and prebiotics, is actually much simpler than it seems. And once you grasp what each of them does for your body, you'll never look at gut health the same way again. In this video, we'll dive deep into what probiotics and prebiotics are, how they work in your digestive system, where to find them, and why your body needs both to thrive. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with probiotics. The word itself comes from the Greek pro, meaning for, and biotic, meaning life. That already gives you a clue. Probiotics are live microorganisms, mainly bacteria and some yeasts, that are good for your health, especially your digestive system. Think of them as the friendly, beneficial bacteria that naturally live in your gut. They help keep harmful bacteria in check, assist in digesting food, and even support your immune system. You've probably heard of strains like Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium. These are the star players in many probiotic supplements and fermented foods. Yogurt, kaffir, sauerkraut, kimchi, miso, and kombucha are all examples of probiotic-rich foods. Consuming probiotics replenishes your gut microbiota, especially after situations that disrupt it such as a course of antibiotics or illness. On the other hand, prebiotics aren't living organisms at all. They're a type of dietary fiber that feeds the good bacteria already living in your gut. Essentially, prebiotics are the food source that help probiotics thrive and multiply. Without prebiotics, even the healthiest probiotic strains wouldn't be able to survive for long. Common prebiotics include inulin, fructuligosaccharides, and galactooligosaccharides, and they are found in everyday foods like garlic, onions, bananas, leeks, asparagus, and whole grains. Unlike probiotics, which are sensitive to heat, stomach acid, and shelf life, prebiotics are quite hardy. They pass through the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract undigested, making it all the way to the colon where they can do their job. So to break it down simply, probiotics are the beneficial bacteria and prebiotics are the food for those bacteria. One without the other is like trying to start a garden without soil or trying to grow plants without seeds. They work best together. This brings us to a third term you might come across, symbiotics. These are products or foods that combine both probiotics and prebiotics in one formula. The goal is to introduce good bacteria into your system and immediately provide them with the nutrients they need to flourish. Some supplement companies and fortified foods have embraced this concept and you'll find symbiotic products labeled clearly as such. But why should any of this matter to you? Well, the gut microbiome, the community of microorganisms living in your intestines, plays a vital role in your overall health. Not only does it help with digestion and absorption of nutrients, but it also influences your immune system, mood, and even your risk of chronic diseases. A well-balanced gut flora has been linked to reduced inflammation, better metabolic health, improved mental clarity, and even healthier skin. Probiotics can help restore balance when this ecosystem gets out of sync, such as after an illness, stress, or poor dietary choices. Prebiotics help ensure that the healthy bacteria already in your system continue to grow and outcompete the bad guys. One common misconception is that popping a probiotic pill is a quick fix. But probiotics don't permanently colonize the gut. Many of them pass through and only stay temporarily. Think of them as tourists rather than residents. 
Their benefits often depend on taking them regularly and pairing them with prebiotic-rich foods. In contrast, prebiotics can actually change the composition and activity of your gut bacteria over time, creating a longer-term impact on your microbiome health. There are also a few important things to consider when choosing probiotic and prebiotic sources. Not all probiotics are created equal. Different strains serve different purposes. For instance, lactobacillus acidophilus may help with lactose digestion, while bifidobacterium lactis could support immune function. Check labels to see which strains are included and whether they've been clinically studied. As for prebiotics, Whole foods are the best sources. Supplements are available, but it's easy and often more effective to get them naturally through your diet. Of course, everyone's body is different. Some people may experience bloating or discomfort when first adding prebiotics to their diet, especially if they ramp up their fiber intake too quickly. Others might find certain probiotic strains work better for them than others. It's always a good idea to consult a healthcare provider if you have digestive issues or underlying health conditions before starting any new supplement regimen. Let's not forget how modern life impacts gut health. Processed foods, stress, poor sleep, and excessive use of antibiotics can all negatively affect the balance of bacteria in your digestive system. That's why incorporating both probiotics and prebiotics into your daily routine can be a powerful way to support your body naturally. It's not about choosing one over the other. It's about understanding that they work in harmony. When you nurture your gut microbiome, you're actually supporting your entire body, your brain, your immune system, your skin, and your energy levels. In conclusion, probiotics and prebiotics are two sides of the same coin. Probiotics are the live beneficial bacteria that offer a range of health benefits when consumed in the right amounts. Prebiotics are the specialized plant fibers that feed and sustain those bacteria, helping them flourish and continue to support your gut. Rather than thinking of them as separate, think of them as a dynamic duo both necessary for a balanced, healthy microbiome. So the next time you're making a smoothie or planning your meals, think about how you can include both fermented foods and fiber-rich ingredients. Your gut will thank you. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.